Spirituality is the process of transcending the limitation of the human self. It is about reaching beyond the centricity of who you believe you are. Knowing that there is a higher power, higher powers out there that are in fact a mirror of your God self and that your God self is a mirror of those cosmic powers. Hi everyone, I'm Elena and I'm delighted to be here with you as I join this global platform provided by Truth and Reconciliation, a worldwide movement. Today is the first of the two events that I shall host on this platform. And today we shall be talking about breaking out of our prisons of gender using the power of the Guru within. We shall have a look at the misconceptions about man and woman, male and female, masculine and feminine. The prisons that we live in are self-constructed. They have been constructed by the ignorance, the lack of wisdom, and often the inflexibility of the human mind to move beyond what it believes to be true. The second event that I shall be hosting on Saturday 24th is in a sense a continuation of this one but it is a meditation a channeled meditation where we shall connect to this infinite power of the inner Guru and experience for ourselves the oneness and the inner union that defines who we are and that in truth should define the world that we live in. Many, many times we have being told that women are more spiritual than men, that women are more religious than men, that women are more emotional, more vulnerable in seeking out safety and stability and security in relationships. And just as often we have also been told that men approach God and the concept of God and the concept of religion from a more practical point of view. That a man looks at God as something he believes in, but often not something that he believes has a pertinent role to play in the everyday activities of his life. We've also been told that women 
have been socialized, have been conditioned to be a certain way, to, to be loving, to be kind, compassionate. And so women begin to play these roles, even though I know a significantly large number of women to whom these roles do not fit naturally. Men, on the other hand, have been socialized to believe that because they are the providers, they have a certain right to express anger, to be aggressive. even to be compared. And therefore men play these roles that they are conditioned to play. Even though I know a significant number of men who are so far from this conditioned belief that they themselves somehow think that they are effeminate. These, these common beliefs of what a man should be, of what a man is, and what a woman should be, and what a woman is, is responsible for the wide gulf that is present between men and women in our world today. Not only is there a gulf between men and women, but our world has become imbalanced, skewed to only one side. And whether you embody a man or a woman, somehow the attractiveness, the temptation to fall in line with the action and the competitiveness and the ruggedness seems to have both men and women in a strange stranglehold. Men seem to be in their natural element for most part. But women who are certainly not naturally inclined towards this find themselves working very hard to develop these manly characteristics. About two hours ago, I had a session with a lovely young woman. And she was talking sadly about how women in her organization turned against her, women whom she had considered to be her friends. But as soon as she received a significant promotion, these same friends turned against her and not only was there an implied suggestion about her immorality, but a couple of them even told her openly that you have received this promotion only because you are friendly with the boss. Here is a young married woman, very recently married, 
who was shocked at the implications and these implications came from her women friends why is this so because women in acting to find a place in what they consider as a man's world but which for them is very attractive why is it so attractive because men seem to be getting away with so many things that women are limited by it's almost as though society says oh he is a man boys will be boys and a rising number of women want to have that same freedom want to experience that same liberation they feel trapped in these prisons of social behavior of socially acceptable behavior they feel trapped in the prison of most people believing that their place is only within the home men on the other hand feel trapped in their own inadequacies as the women are making strong forays into a corporate world into a legal world into an economic world even into the world of the military and firefighters men are beginning to experience their inadequacies they are beginning to see that the women who are entering their workplaces domains that were earlier only the domains for the men these women are are smart and efficient and they can see that the woman can multitask whereas a man is inclined to focus on one task at a time and this makes the man feel inadequate and he too like the woman is caught in his prison he is caught in the prison of his masculinity the social construct tells him that his masculinity should be aggressive competitive hard striking and very often he finds that he is none of these but he tries very hard to be who he is not he tries very hard to portray to the world a face that he knows is false and as this false face gets stronger somewhere he forgets he real face and the prison around him seems like a never ending sentence what has caused this where have we heard so much that both men and women feel in prison maybe a question we should also ask is who who is responsible 
for these prisons? The answer lies in ignorance. There is no one responsible for this. There is only one thing responsible, and that is ignorance. Ignorance of what is the cosmic truth. Why on earth did the cosmic oneness create the duality of bodies? Why did the cosmic oneness choose to express itself as a man and as a woman? Not only are the bodies so entirely different, but scientists tell us in the recent past that even the brains are significantly different. The hypothalamus of the woman being stronger, the amygdala of the man being stronger. The brain is also different. Why? Why do you think cosmic oneness would have chosen to create this? We know that the answer does not lie in it chose this for conflict, it chose this in order to create agitation and disturbance. We know that that is not the answer. There is an answer. Our planet, this beautiful planet that we call Earth, is ruled by several cosmic rays. These are rays that not only affect our planet, but they affect each and every one of us. For example, ray one is the ray of power and ray two is the ray of love and ray three is the ray of wisdom. And when you have a significant predominance of a certain ray or rays, then your personality is determined by that. Our earth is ruled by the fourth ray, which is a ray that encourages duality. The fourth ray encourages polarity. The fourth ray moves the human race or appears to move the human race away from oneness. And again, the question says, but why? You see, ray four is the ray of harmony through conflict. Our beloved Earth is strongly influenced by this cosmic ray, the ray of harmony through conflict. As a human race, you and I move towards harmony. We move towards solution. We move towards oneness, we move towards togetherness only when we have experienced the conflict of separation. We have experienced disharmony. In order to 
create this cradle that is required by the human race to evolve the earth in her wisdom chose ray four and where there is ray four there is duality and so cosmic oneness on this planet has to necessarily create an illusion of duality yes it appears to us as very very real when i look at myself here i see myself as a woman i don't see myself as a man it appears very real but there is one place not on this earth not in the heavens if you believe that there is a heaven but within yourself there is one place where ray four completely changes its functionality and that place within yourself is what some have called inner guru some have called it the divine spark i call it the god self it is also a god cell c e l l when you take embodiment the light has to convert itself into matter and that takes place by the creation of what an cell an actual cell your body that cell is the god cell it lies at the very core of your energy being and as the fetus grows in the mother's womb the god cell begins to multiply with every multiplication the god cell becomes more and more and more human more and more physical more and more able to give us our physical features our bodies our hair our face and also our characteristics but they all originate from at one single cell which you might if you wish call the divine spark which you might if you wish call the inner guru and that is the god self the human being is never completely unaware of its godhood again trapped in the illusion that either we or others around us whom we might judge have forgotten the divine spark that mothered us created us but in fact that is not true at no given point in time is any human being however what you might judge that human being to be 
ever forgets completely that which the human being is at the core the god self may remain hidden but is never forgotten and it is this god self that urges the human race to change to evolve to advance whether it be in the field of science and technology or mathematics or medicine or spiritual awareness all that we have been spurred on to do as a human race the changes and transformations that we have been encouraged to make the inspirations that the human race has received whether it's the steam engine or the electric car all of this has its root in the god self that is the one place the real form of duality does not function cannot function at that center at that core oneness is 100% So now let's understand this. On the face of it, when we see a man and we see a woman, we see a completely different face. We see a completely different body. We see facial, and yet, on this illusion lies. the god self that consists of the same cosmic in all at the very core at the very physical core you and i are really one why then have we become caught in i am a man i am a woman a man is like this a woman is like that a man should a woman shouldn't the reason is we have become caught in this conflict between and gender sex is what we see on the outside the sex the female sex so the sex that we are determines our body type our body structures how we speak how we think how we approach different situations the gender is not at all the same as sex we have so erroneously this to gender gender in fact is a choice made by an individual i'm going to repeat this again gender is a choice made by an individual i may have a certain sex in my case woman female but i might choose the masculine gender 
it does not on the outside make me appear any less of a woman than i am but on the inside it completely changes my energy structure gender is a choice made by the individual even before its birth the soul that is preparing for embodiment chooses the gender so it's clear to me that i chose my gender to be feminine and so when a person looks at me and perceives the way i work i interact i feel i express myself they very comfortably call me a woman but if i had chosen the masculine gender and that would bring in a fair amount of aggression and competitiveness and ambition it might also make me choose how i dress the world would look at me and might judge me and say how unfeminine she is and this is exactly what happens to men and women whom we judge as masculine or not feminine or not what we are looking at is only the sex that the soul has chosen not the gender once again i know you will ask but why why would the soul sometimes choose one sex but the other gender the answer is very simple cosmic oneness seeks to experience itself in different ways in different forms in different bodies through different expressions but cosmic oneness also wishes for you and i to appreciate to respect to honor the freedom of choice that we are given you and i are not the only ones who have been given freedom of choice but that man that you have so callously called effeminate that woman whom you have so cruelly looked down upon they also have the right to those same choices so when you look at the sex but forget that there is yet another choice that this soul has made and that the choice is that of gender that is when we become participants in this battle of the sexes i absolutely loathe that term 
why must there be a battle of the sexes when masculine and feminine are only expressions of the one god self when we do not look at gender when we forget that gender is the choice that is made the human mind judges condemns this choice of gender is definitely made before embodied but it doesn't have to remain the same throughout one's life as the person evolves as the person changes as the person allows transformation to take place within and outside this choice of gender becomes the free will choice of the human physical person i can so see that in my personal life i started my life as an extremely loving creative very very intuitive young girl then came the teenage years which were anything but easy for me and something within me made me take that free will choice and shift from feminine gender to masculine gender oh i continued to grow as a young girl as a young woman i was everything that was the typical face and body of a woman but i had made a choice which i now see in retrospect i didn't know it then but i can see it now i made the choice of switching gender probably the inner child believing that the switch from feminine gender to masculine gender would make me feel less vulnerable less sensitive would make me hurt less would somehow dull the edge of pain and so i grew up into a teenager and a young adult who was everything that is the masculine control aggressive hot-headed impatient intolerant of course i didn't see it then i see it now that although i did make the choice of masculine gender because this choice came from that inner wounding the masculine gender that i took on was the wounded masculine and not the divine masculine and it remained this way for several years till again life changed and there was healing 
and there was understanding and there was wisdom. And again, I didn't know it then, but I switched to the original soul choice of the feminine gender. So you see, when you look at someone and say woman or man, you have to be more discerning. You have to remember to honor the gender qualities that they have also taken on as a free will choice. It is their right to choose. It is our right to choose. And when we judge ourselves for the choices we make, we must judge others for the choices we make. So what has taken place now is that the masculine energy and the feminine energy that we see predominantly around us is a wounded energy. When women are judged as too emotional, too clingy, too possessive, too manipulative, too feeling oriented, what you're looking at is the expression of the wounded feminine. When the man is judgmental and a control freak and a tyrant and aggressive in, in both speech as well as action, you are looking at the wounded masculine. I've been thinking about this for several days because I knew I wanted to share with you everything that I truly believe in. And I've been taking a good, long, hard look, not only at myself, but at the world that we live in, the world that we call our own. And whether I look at a man or a woman, male sex, female sex, in both, predominantly, I am able to see the wounded masculine. Where there is the wounded masculine, there cannot be the divine feminine. The feminine will be wounded as well and vice versa. The God cell of one energy is not only aware of the sex that the soul has chosen, but the God cell within you, the Guru within you, is aware of the gender that you have chosen as well. The saddest aspect, I consider it the saddest aspect, is when, whether man or woman, hide their gender and express it in a way that they believe they must express themselves, which is socially desirable. So the man who might really be more comfortable 
being a homemaker or working in a predominantly creative, intuitive field might force himself to work in a field where only his mind is used, his logic is used, his analytical abilities are used. And of course he has them. But his rich treasure of intuition and creativity and caring and nurturing lie untapped. And that is why I call this sad. Because somewhere deep within that man, he knows he is living a lie. And let us look at the woman whose every fiber in her being urges her to go out and find her place in the world of finance, in the world of law and business and administration. But she forces herself to be the perfect face of the mother. And actually runs her home phenomenally well, budgeting well, very efficient. But when the children leave the nest, this woman crashes into depression. She strives to find herself again because she has lost her identity. The time has come when we have to stop looking at jobs being filled by a certain sex but we must encourage the appropriate gender to take on those roles. To stop looking at the face and the body and instantly labeling as oh, male or oh, female. When the God cell of oneness expresses itself as the gender, that original choice made by the soul is never a choice of the wounded masculine or the wounded feminine. That is the choice of the divine masculine and the divine feminine. And you might very rightly ask, on what is this soul choice based? The soul choice is based upon the, the wealth of experience that you have accumulated in all your incarnations. When as the soul, you make the choice that I shall now return to earth to continue my journey. One of the first things that a soul does is to look at the Akashic records. And the Akashic records informs the soul of the wealth of experience. But 
it also therefore indirectly informs the soul of those experiences that are at present not seen in the akashic records so let's assume just for the sake of assumption that my soul viewed my akashic records and saw that i had a wealth of divine masculine energy and all the experiences that come from that but that the divine feminine and its experiences were not as strong so that is one of the reasons why the soul chooses to be a certain gender not a certain sex a certain gender there is another reason as well sometimes due to repeated use of the same gender that soul feel comfortable with the gender attributes and chooses to to go for the comfortable gender in order to focus very clearly and strongly upon tasks that the soul sets out for itself in this incarnation one or the other that choice is made and then we are born remember the choices of the divine masculine and the divine feminine it is our gender i cannot stress this enough it is our gender that urges us that 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 creates a force of attraction between one person and another person if at the time of meeting my significant other i have the feminine gender in order to achieve completion because i know because we know at every moment we know that we are moving into completion we are moving into oneness in order to attain that completion i will feel that force of attraction for someone who has a masculine gender sex is the union of the male and the female the man and the woman or the man and the man or the woman and the woman spirituality is the union of genders and in this union of genders there is always the union of masculine feminine feminine masculine those choose the same sex partner are also choosing the opposite gender gender the masculine gender in the woman seeking out the feminine gender in another woman the masculine gender in a man 
seeking out the feminine gender in another man. When you look at homosexuality from this angle, the seeking out of the opposite gender in order to create completeness, in order to create oneness, in order to create union, how can you then condemn homosexuality? If there is condemnation, it is because you are getting stuck in the sex of the person and are not aware of the gender. At that core level, the Guru is one energy. I say that incorrectly, in fact. The Guru is the potential of oneness. I take back the word energy and you'll understand why in a moment. The divine feminine principle is the principle of energy what we have often called Shakti. The divine masculine principle is the principle of consciousness, that which is often called Shiva. Consciousness requires energy in order to express itself. Consciousness is potential energy. In order to express itself in a human world, in order to express itself in a world of map and substance, consciousness requires energy. Shiva means Shakti. Divine masculine requires divine feminine. On the other hand, energy becomes stale and warped and wounded if it is not constantly being showered by consciousness. Energy becomes wounded, becomes warped, becomes imbalanced when it is not constantly showered by consciousness. So Shakti needs Shiva. Divine Feminine needs Divine Masculine. If only we would keep just this simple cosmic truth in our awareness at all times, we would instantly stop labeling, we would instantly stop judging, condemning, and we would stop conditioning our boys to be a certain way and our girls to be a certain way. All the parents out there, all the adult caregivers out there, please listen well. If you are giving your boy 
on the canon set also give your boy a doll if you are giving your little girl a doll please also give her a firefighting set you as a parent have only this one task to fulfill to honor the choices made by the soul who has chosen to come to you <clears throat> and to encourage that soul who might be your son or your daughter to follow and fulfill those choices that is our only task as parents as teachers as adults our task is not to condition them to be who they are not our task is not to create in them the guilt of not following socially desirable modes of behavior our task is not to inform them and drill into them that this is how they must be or must not be evolution cannot take place if soul choices are not allowed to flourish my cosmic master jet fire has said on more than one occasion that there are sadly more souls leaving earth without completing even 50% of their soul choices then there are souls who are completing their choices and these souls are departing without all their choices being completed because they are striving to fit into the molds created for them by their parents and their teachers and society haven't you wondered i certainly have why youngsters why teenagers over the past maybe a decade are so angry why are they picking up guns and shooting others and often themselves why are they so darkly depressed that they prefer to take their own lives even before they have hit their own prime could one of the answers be that they are being forced to be who they are not that they are screaming inside but no one's listening we have to move away from the wounded masculine and wounded feminine and for that we need to turn our attention to the inner guru this god self 
where all is known. There is no human being in this world who does not have both the masculine energy and the feminine energy. At this current stage in my life, I have made a free will choice of the feminine gender. But that does not mean that I do not have a healthy volume of the masculine energy within as well. I didn't. I wouldn't be able to manage my life, my home, my business, my work. I wouldn't be able to analyze and use my common sense, my logic, For a man who has in this phase chosen the masculine gender has a very healthy quantum of the feminine energy within him. That is why he is able to hold and coddle and embrace and play with his children. That is why he is able to love and nurture and nourish his partner. That is why he is able to bond with his ex. That is why he is able to create a beautiful model of a ship from something that looks like just piece of wood. So you are, you have made a choice of gender, certainly. But you have within you the other energy as well. Consciousness and energy are lived side by side within you not only within your God self, but within you. When it is the wounded masculine, the consciousness wears the face of consciousness of ego, consciousness of scarcity, consciousness of separation, consciousness of death and loneliness. When the feminine energy is a wounded energy, it turns into an energy that is manipulated and bitter and filled with hate and envy and jealousy and meanness. If you find authentically, honestly within yourself, if you find the wounded masculine and the wounded feminine, please understand that the other energy cannot be divine. It will be as wounded though not as expressive. The only answer to this is to turn to the Guru within. And maybe we could do that together right now. to shut our eyes so that we do not see the world outside. Allow the eyelids to come down so 
so that vision takes the place of eyesight. Vision only turns in words. And very gently, very slowly with the power of your breath, Try to discover the presence of the Guru within. Don't allow preconceived notions to jump up. Remember this God cell keeps moving and sometimes it's in the heart and sometimes it's in the solar plexus and sometimes it's in the womb and sometimes it's where you might never expect it to be give yourself the permission to heal the wounded masculine and the wounded feminine. Give yourself the permission to uncover the truth about gender. Gender becomes a prison when it is not understood. When gender gets confused with sex, it turns into a prison where you cannot breathe. Look for this God self, the inner guru. As you continue to breathe, Gently, deeply, rhythmically. And turn your vision in words. You might be surprised to find that a certain part of your physical body seems to light up almost as though a bulb has been switched on. Your inner guru has revealed itself. Connect to this inner guru. The guru, the teacher on the outside is certainly important because the guru illuminates your mind. And you certainly need that external guru till you are able to connect with the inner guru. And the inner guru illuminates your consciousness, your energy, your very soul. Connect deeply to this inner Guru. And place your physicality before the Guru. The physicality of being a man, the physicality of being a woman. Place this before the Guru. and ask the inner guru to impregnate the physicality 
of you. With the divine masculine energy, with the divine feminine energy. The physicality of me with the divine masculine and divine feminine. Honestly express to the inner guru how the wounded masculine expresses itself through your words, through your actions. How the wounded feminine expresses itself through your words, through your actions, through your emotions. There is no shame. Be honest. As the Guru continues to impregnate you with the Divine Masculine, the Divine Feminine, the Consciousness, the Energy of Oneness, you continue to express to the Guru the wounded energies that manifest through you. Sometimes your own wounded energies manifest themselves through a person in your life who is your mirror. What you can't see within is what you are seeing on the outside. Express this as well to the inner guru. Show me my... Wounded masculine and wounded feminine. Ask the inner guru Beloved inner guru to make you aware make me aware of the soul choice of my soul choice of gender of gender that you made that I made the soul choice before you even came into an embodied form before embodiment Ask the Guru to enlighten you about this choice. The current gender that you have chosen to express. Is it in alignment with that choice? Is my current gender in alignment with my choice? If it is in alignment, is it in alignment Help me to align. as a divine energy or as a wounded energy? Help me to heal all the wounded masculine. And, and if it is feminine. not in alignment with your soul choice, ask the inner guru to help you to discover why you have momentarily walked away from the soul choice. Why have I walked away? If I have. What can you do to return to the soul choice? The Guru has all the answers that you seek. Every time you seek an answer on the outside, you have lost a small connection with the inner Guru.
at this point, it's time to review your life. Review the persons who have come into your life. Have they predominantly been the wounded masculine energy? The wounded feminine energy? Remember, I'm talking of the gender, not the sex. Recognize the gender. Which wounded gender has played predominant role in your life through the people that you have experienced, whom you have encountered? When you know that energy, once again, Inform the inner guru that you are aware that the predominance of this wounded energy in your life is only a reflection of your inner wounded energy. Wounded energies that come into my life are a reflection of Take responsibility. Woundedness. Do not look at yourself and see a woman or a man. If you do not recognize your gender, how can you expect another to do the same for you? If I can look into my mirror and only see myself as a woman, then others will also see me as a woman, but they will go one step further. When they see me as a woman, they will cast me into a mold. They will force me into roles that I might not wish to play. They will label me. Recognize your gender and be proud of that gender. The inner guru expresses itself through you, predominantly through that gender. Do not turn away from that gender. You are most attractive only when you are expressing your soul driven choice of gender, whether it be the divine masculine or the Divine Feminine. There is no shame in either. Both are expressions of the Inner Guru. Before you Open your eyes again and for a very brief while maybe lose connection with your inner guru. Promise your inner guru until some time as you return to that connection with the guru, you shall desist from seeing human beings as male and female, 
as men and women that you shall see them as men and women as men and women who express their soul driven choice of gender i shall see them as that you shall honor their sex and you shall honor the gender this guru purnima that is just a few days away awaken within you i am masculine and the divine feminine It has been such an honor and a privilege for me to be with you, to share with you a very special message that has come to you through your own inner guru. It is your guru who has brought you here. this connection that you have made with your inner guru let it flourish and then help others to connect to their inner guru only then only then will this very sadly imbalanced world heal itself only then will consciousness and energy flow through and with each other only then will shiva and shakti come into spiritual union and only then will sex stop being an act of domination and cruelty which shall become an act of union oneness and true love thank you for spending these 90 minutes with me i hope to see you all on the 24th when we shall come together in a lovely channeled meditation wishing you all the joy of guru purnima may the sun and the moon shine beautifully through you i love you